Okay, Kevin Silberberg from Bakersfield, California, Panama Buena Vista School District. 25 schools. Uh, we have taken on the classroom in new and exciting ways. When I came to the district, I asked, uh, probably like you did, superintendents, you asked your board, do you want me to have a foot on the gas, tank, a gas uh, pedal or the brake pedal? And of course they say both, but we want to go. Um, so I've been in a mode of doing everything uh, possible. We've, we've got some very uh, exciting initiatives going on. But the one I wanted to share with you today is that we are no longer uh, focusing so much on the innovation. You know, with LCAP, it was invent, invent, invent. Come up with new strategies based on the, the needs of your community. Well, we're now in the measure, 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 feedback. It's time for feedback, accurate feedback to the board, to the cabinet, to the principals, and to the teachers, and ultimately by the end of the year to the kids. And so that's what I want to take you through. So this is the aim, make feedback more powerful to all those different people in the district in new and exciting ways. We're big advocates of Hattie's work. You know what Hattie says about feed, feedback, it's close to the top. It's, it's uh, critical. So where have we been? Does this look familiar to anybody? Okay, so uh, California Department of Ed says, here's your dashboard. You know, make, make sense of this. And so I had our principals come in front of our board uh, to a month and report on this, and it just isn't cutting it. So that's where we've been. Then we got into the PDF. You know, we, we were really great with graphic programs. We could create graphs and charts and make things look great and tell, tell a little bit of the story uh, at each school. Because as you know, if the LCAP doesn't make it down to the school level, forget it. It's not a district. It's a school level change mechanism. That's where we're from, and so where are we going? If you're like us, I have over 10 information systems and they're all silos. I tell people it's like this, okay? I have student information systems. I have staff information that tell me how often teachers are at school. I have financial systems. Ours is Munis that tells us all the financial data. These are all silos and of course academic info systems that talk to Renaissance, talk to uh, uh, Dibbles and CASP and all the academic things. There, they were like this. And what we wanted to do was bring them all together so everybody has a very one quick stop. And so this was the first generation. This was the first thing that we came up with. I wish I could tell you that this is cheap to do. It's not cheap to do. And it's very expensive, but Barbara, I'll tell you, we're gonna share it with our county office so all the schools in our, our county will have access to what, what we're working on. And, Chris Fraser's pretty excited about that. So what we wanted was something that would measure how we're doing in trash per child. Do you know how much trash costs you and your district per child? Do you know how your, your uh, energy systems are doing? All the way to academic information based on your formative assessments. How are your students doing? As a cabinet member, this is what we look at. This is what we did look at last year and we're refining it. And now it's gonna look like this this coming year. It's a one-stop shop for us to quickly know how we are doing. Based on green, we're going. Yellow, little, little scary. Red, we got problems. And it could be student attendance. It could be teacher attendance, which is very interesting to look at day in and day out. <laughs> Our students are there more often than, uh, than the teachers are on Mondays and Fridays. Just saying. <laughs> Suspension data, anybody measuring that? You better be measuring that. Uh, all the way down to watch lists in English language arts and math. Who's our intensive care uh, students that need attention? So by clicking on any one of these, you drill down into things like this. So this is, if you're a principal in our district, this is what you see on your uh, dashboard. So uh, they are looking at you know, we were one of the districts that was sued on our PE minutes. Uh, we have to measure that. Uh, suspensions as a principal, their watch list. But over here is the most important thing. These are the kids that are trending up or trending down. These are the kids you need to, to get out of your office and go and see what's happening in their classroom. 
If you click on any one of those students over there that's trending up by more than 15 points or down in our formative assessments, you get something like this. This is what we call the money screen. Because when this happens in a student's life, we don't want to wait for an IEP or a student study team to have that discussion. We need to know right away. And so if you click on any one of those dots, it's the formative assessments that we measure in our district. Down here is the grade level, uh, the, the report card information. The one I love the best, you can't see it, but if you click that, it goes to an observation form that principals now go into the classroom like instructional rounds ought to be. I'm looking for a student that's trending up or down. Here's what a principal gives to teachers. Actually, teachers have it now, what we call the ICU list. This is what they're talking about in their professional development time. What are the kids, how are the kids doing? There's typically about 25 kids per grade level at every school that need attention now. Not a week from now, now. They get lists like that. This is a teacher dashboard. Remember green, remember yellow, remember red. You can quickly see who needs attention. You click on any one of those bars, it takes you to the formative assessments and all of the data that we have on those students. This is what I'm after by Christmas of next year is a student uh, dashboard. So every student in our district has something that, go, that takes our, the work that we're working on in, in uh, badges to the report card to if they click on English language arts or math, how they're doing in trend form in the data that they're doing so kids can have a piece of the pie in their instructional program. I learned a new program this summer, a new way to, you know, cartoon. So these are the conversations. Is that you? Yeah, well. <laughs> in conclusion, John, I try to learn a new, uh, a new communication device every summer. I, I learned one in, in your session with the podcast today. But so anyways, individualized learning plans for 18,000 students. We plan on that this year. Goodbye data silos, hello analytics dashboards and metrics. The conversations between teachers, they don't think you use any of this stuff. But that's the new, what they're gonna have available to them. We'll be using all of the formative assessments that they have. So PGA, we do a lot of this in education. We very, do very little of this and this. And I would propose you need to do the G and the A. Sherry Turkle says it best though, as a balance, Apps can only give you a number, only people can provide a narrative, technology can expose mechanisms, people have to find meaning. And then the ultimate closing screen is Yoda. No, try not, do or do not, there is no try. If you catch me tonight, I'll tell you all of the pitfalls that we've had developing this kind of stuff. Like I said, uh, it's, it's a journey. And this year will look a lot different than last year. Finding people with this skill set is very difficult. And then to retain them is even, even harder because they get offers from, I show this stuff to other places and they get hired away. So uh, there's better ways to do it. But we're in this journey of offering feedback to our people in a much different way. We have to do that. We can't just innovate. We have to show our board and our constituents, is it making a difference? And that's what I'd propose to you today. Thank you. Yeah.